why I can't stand IDEs after I use Vim. So I've been using Vim for a couple of years now, and I can't stand using IDs anymore. I actually started programming with IDs. I use a lot of different kinds. I use Visual Studio, Eclipse, all kinds of uh, JetBrains IDs. I always he didn't say NetBeans, kind of a loser. Not gonna lie to you. I expected, I expected, if you're gonna be throwing out Eclipse, I expect at least one honorable mention NetBeans, the superior version of Eclipse. I always thought of Vim as like this editor that is very hard to use and you only use it when you're connecting with SSH to some remote computer and you don't have any graphical user interface. But I We actually, like this, me and this guy have the exact same opinion. Okay, yeah. Like when I was, when I was a young man, in my early 20s, I genuinely did think anyone who used Vim was just trying to be difficult and show off. Like I had the same mentality of like half of three quarters of tech Twitter. I think once I realized that you can actually use Vim to write real code, you can use it much more efficiently. Then I really got serious about learning Vim. And this has paid me off very well because Vim is truly an incredible editor. There are two main things that IDs are horrible at and Vim is just awesome in the way it solves it. So the okay. first thing I think that IDs are extremely bloated. I think there is this thing that like each ID. I like this man, we're gonna let him cook, okay? Let him cook. He has like sort of these features that are geared towards a specific language or a specific family of languages. And once you like deviate from the language that it's meant for, the ID is pretty much useless because it contains a lot of garbage that is aimed for a specific language, but you don't need to use that language anymore. So that's one thing. And a lot of those bloated features you're not really gonna use because it has so many useless features that if you're programming in a specific language, you're not gonna need all the rest of those stuff. So they're just- Has anyone used a lot of PyCharm? Can I get it once in the chat if you've used a lot of PyCharms or uh, WebStorms or C-Lion or any of the like, uh, the non-complete IntelliJ one. Cause I've used a lot of uh, ultimate. They're the same picture. I've never tried using not ultimate. Wait, what am I missing? Oh, my chat wasn't caught off. Uh, pie chart was, sorry, dude, my chat was, I was looking at, I was looking at the ASMR. <laughs> the chat I saw over here was just all the ASMR stuff. Like almost there, keep clicking. And I'm like, what the hell are you guys talking about? We're talking about IDEs? And you guys are talking about licking keyboards? This is disgusting. Um, keep clicking. <laughs> okay, now that we're back on track, uh, PyCharm is mid. Well, what about it? I mean, do you guys, is there some benefit to using these like single language IDEs? Because he does mention it as like, it's kind of like a bloated point, but in some sense, having a single IDE to, or a single language IDE, is there benefit to it? Like, because I know you can use the ultimate. Ultimate gives you all of the editing stuff, but the language specific ones give you all of the deep integrations. Okay, so you're saying that you get uh, you get better integrations with specific tools on the specific language ones. Uh, I haven't used Rust Rover, so I don't know. Uh, I haven't used it. I've only read about it, and it seems pretty cool. Like I like the idea. Honestly, no, not uh, for my use cases. Yeah, I use a lot of multi language packages, so it's kind of hard sometimes to use single language ones. Global search was very accessible. I mean, global search is still very easy. Global search works like out of the box for everybody, including by language server and all that. Client was better uh, debugging for C++ and Rust from, uh, yeah, okay, fair. Okay. Just kind of clutter in your eye and they're making the IDs incredibly slow to actually boot up and to use. They also contain fair. a lot of bugs. I felt that especially when using Eclipse, Eclipse is like a horrible ID. Now, a lot of people think that IDs Agreed. are actually good for the autocomplete features, and that's something Agreed. that Vim lacks. So actually, Vim does have autocomplete. It even has that out of the box, and you can also connect it to a language server and actually have the Vim understand the language that you're currently writing. Oh, by the way, you, I, I do feel like it's fair to say that saying IDEs are often buggy and then stating you used Eclipse a lot. It's a little unfair because like, I never had much problems with IntelliJ that I can remember. But Eclipse, on the other hand, is just doo doo. So you know, is it is it fair? I don't think it's fair. Uh, also, if I did anything with Java, I would use IntelliJ. Okay, I'd use IntelliJ if I did anything with Java. And giving you errors and warnings inside your code. For example, what you can see here, where it says that this constructor function may be converted to a class declaration. This is actually a language server of TypeScript running on this file with a plugin I put here on Vim. I'm actually- 
Is he using default Vim color scheme? With wrap? Damn, this guy's a Chad. I mean, anyone that's using set set no wrap false and default color scheme. I mean, this this Giga Chad moment. This guy, this guy is flexing on us. Like, I, I, I use rose pine. Hey, look, it's Git integration, and I'm using a little bit of rose pine. Hey, you guys like my rose pine? My waifu. This guy's like, no way. We got we got text wrap and default color like kind of minimalist on the plugins so i don't really use a lot of plugins yeah i only have two plugins on my setup Ooh. and i generally feel that vim just has so many awesome and useful features that i don't really need any plugin to make myself more efficient that. so i think the main thing that is really awesome minimalist. about vim that you don't get on any id any other text editor is the efficient text editing capabilities for example something you'll see a lot of people that use ids uh, do is scroll with their mouse. Okay, they reach out to their mouse and they yeah, just scroll just manually the until they get to where they want. Just the worst. Now this is really inefficient because sometimes it can take you a long time to actually find the line that you're looking for. Real talk, who here, who uses a mouse, starts scrolling, knows for a fact you could probably find it more efficiently. But since you're already scrolling and you have a sunk cost, you just keep on scrolling. You just keep on, you just keep on, keep it on. You know you do this. Dude, the sunk cost fallacy is so real when it comes to a mouse. Like, I know for a fact that I am 5,000 lines away, and I'm like, not going to happen. Nope, we're going to get, we're going, we're going, we're going. Like, I know I can do better. Just refuse. Click on the mini map. Let me get back to, like, where I was. I was on navigation, right? And I just want to go to the end of this function. All I percent have to do time. is just percent. I press percent, and I just get to the end of this function. Love it. This I is use one it example of how all Vim makes an operation that. Here, let me actually show you something that I think is super, super cool. Are you ready for something that's super, super cool? Have you ever been in this situation where you have some sort of some JSON, okay? You're in some JSON file that's huge, right? And you have your key, and it's filled with just like a bunch of numbers, right? Zero, uh, let's see. And there we go. If, you know, you have a bunch of numbers, right? And let's go like this. Let's take that. Is there an easy way to do this? Yeah, I think there is. All right, here we go. I think we're going to get this one. Record a macro. Yap it. Paste it down. Paste it. Ah, I guess we don't care, do we? I thought I had something pretty cool. But I'm not going to be able to do that. Whatever. Close enough. I thought I had something cool. Anyways, have you ever been in this situation, right? Right here, right? Where you have a huge, you're in a huge block, right? Have you ever been in this? Have you been in this situation? Have you been in the situation? And you want to like get to the end of it, right? You want to get to the end of it. Dude, check this out. I just want to be able to go to either side of these two things. Oh man, dude, hit it with like a little VA, little VA, do you see that? Little VA opening bracket gets me to the end. I'm already highlighted. And now I'm on the end. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. VA opener. Bam. Out. Get him out. Just get get the hell out. Get the hell out. Right? It's so good. Dude, it's so good. Yeah, because when you have those super huge text files where it's like you just want to find the two ends, it is so hard to find those two ends. It's so nice. It's so nice. Anyways, keep on going. Percent signs it's really manual thing. and annoying. Amazing. Just scroll with your scroll wheel and just make it with a single press of your button. Same thing for going on the start, beginning, or end of your line. Just zero and dollar. Yeah, Very simple. I like that. I use Another thing that usually. I really got to use to. I use I usually use underscore uh, because zero goes to the zeroth position. Underscore goes to the first character. Uh, also, so does hat. Hat goes to the first character, but dollar sign hat does something different than dollar sign underscore. Right? Dollar sign, ugh, dollar sign underscore, you'll notice deleted the line, but dollar sign caret doesn't. I don't really understand. Uh, capital I goes to the first character in the line and starts typing in. So capital I, I'm already in insert mode. 
right? Uh, capital A goes to the end. Super useful. Super, super useful. But for macros, uh, underscores are really awesome. Because look, I started a macro right here. You can see recording A. I'll start always by hitting an underscore first. So I go to the first character in here. And then I start my macro. It's just like such a hack in life to start every macro with an underscore. Mm. Mm. Only when I started using Vim is actually using search to get from place to place on my code. So instead of just scrolling with my wheel and searching for a specific word, I really started using the search capabilities and that can yeah. get you places much more efficiently. So I think yeah. if you actually take away the features that people are used to, the scrolling and the selection and the regular text editing features, you really get start to use to these stuff that are much more efficient, like using search to get from place to place, using these shortcuts to get from, from one place to another in your code. Yep. For example, I, I can just, from my location right over here, press F and round brackets. And it'll just bring me to the round brackets on this line. F okay. is fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add to this. Are you guys ready for this one? This is where it gets real super sexy, okay? We're gonna get, I mean, you got, I mean, this is gonna get so sexy that there are gonna be multiple people that are gonna be pregnated by the end of this. Are you ready for this one? All right, so what he did right here is he did the old F opening little curlies right there, right? Pretty good, huh? Watch this one, VI opening cur uh, parentheses. Look what I just did. I highlighted the entire parentheses group, okay? Look at that. So I can do a little DI op open. And I, I deleted it. So if I do a little CI open, I'm now off typing. Whole thing. Just gasms. Gasms everywhere. Same thing works with uh, with uh, text. So if I go like that, I just go CI uh, double quote. Boom. I'm inside the, pr the, the quotes. Deleted everything beforehand. It is so good. Oh, it's so good. And uh, it hops forward. And if you're already in, you just DI that. And then you can do that. Oh. The hopping forward is so good. So that's really something useful that instead of going heading manually to my mouse and pressing on this I can just do it with a single command on my keyboard. Yeah, so when I go to other people's computers and use something like VS code or whatever I'm really missing these features having to do it again with my mouse is a Yeah, horrible I mean, there's feeling. the bin plugin for VS code. Now, one it's last not thing complete, another thing that it, I see a lot of people lot on of IDs things. do right. is use the file tree and tabs both of which I think are horrible because you can spend a lot of time searching for the file you want with the file tree and the tabs, the same deal. You I search a lot of time I for the tab you want tabs. each time. Tabs are a mistake. And it's really inefficient. I personally tabs don't use file trees. I used to use file trees. Are a mistake. Now that I'm using Vim, I don't use file trees anymore. And of course, tabs, I don't use that as well. So instead of just go, sifting through your entire file tree and searching for each file each time, I just Explain. like using oh, tabs. Oh, super simple. Why, why are tabs a problem? You have this list of files that you're looking at, and you have to find the one you want to get to, and either then, once you see it, you have to control tab over to the place, or B, you have to go move your mouse up there and click the one. So you have to manually search, which humans are terrible at searching. And then on top of it, um, on top of it, you have to actually navigate to that point. Tabs are fine. Okay, so, but, but Fredo, you're, you're talking about something a little bit different than tabs, right? When he was showing tabs, he wasn't quite showing tabs in the way that we would show tabs, right? These are more like tabs for um, uh, VS Code, right? Every single file has its own tab up top. So it's, it's, it's not tabs in Vim. Vim tabs are windows. So you can have one set of windows that are dedicated to a bunch of stuff, another set of windows that are dedicated to other stuff, and we could even make like Harpoon work on a per tab basis. So that's a little different, totally get it, a little bit different. They're, they're, they're just simply different experiences, yes. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it's just that if you're gonna search for a file, use a fuzzy finder. If you're gonna open up a file and you already have it saved, say in Harpoon, then just do that. Hey, I want to go to the init file. I want to go to the config file. I want to go to the list file. I want to go to the test, right? Like, I don't want to have to think about things. I want to have them already on my little fingy so I can just run fast. You know what I mean? To me, it's just kind of crazy to not have it that way. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it just doesn't make much for sense. The name is I agree with this thing. Let's finish it off. As well. So instead of just go, sifting through your entire file tree and searching for each file each time, I just like using tags. So I remember kind of like what I'm searching for each time. So if I wanna to go to like the animation part of this code, I just search part of it and it's just gonna jump me right into the place I wanna go. 
subscribe for more and see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. I liked it. I like this a lot. Uh, I think that he, I, I think what he's, you know, it's what every Vim person kind of struggles with as, as a Vimmer myself. Um, When you really end up using Vim, more and more you use it, you start valuing speed and how you uh, want to customize every little experience. And there's definitely a game there. You don't want to customize everything. You don't want to spend all of your life using, uh, uh, you know, just trying to customize. You got to find that balance. And once you find a good balance where you make Vim into what you want, it's really, really nice. You know what I mean? It, it becomes super nice because it's exactly the way you think. It's not how I think. It's not how someone else thinks. It's totally fine to have a bespoke editing experience on your machine. I think that that's totally fine. And second, it just you you make something purely for yourself, so it's as efficient as possible for you. And then as you go, you'll make more and more efficiency changes, and you'll feel better and be better. I just like it. Um, I also time box my NeoVim RC stuff. Like you know, right now, how many times have I been asked to redo my uh, NeoVim RC? Uh, I'm not doing it. I, I do it about once a year. I sit down for about 10 hours and redo it about once a year, fix the things I don't like, move some stuff around, make it into what I really wish it to be. And that's, I think, a really good way to approach it because then you don't just lose yourself in config hell where you're constantly trying to, you know, where you're constantly trying to like make everything perfect. Just make it perfect enough. Yeah, I spend about 10 hours a, a year making my environment better. Sometimes 20 hours a year, making my environment better. And I think that that's good because I save more than enough time on the other side. Like one of my biggest time savers that I've made, and this thing took two hours to make, was a, a sessionizer, right? This thing is so effing good. I just absolutely love it. Oh, I'm in Harpoon right now. I want to go to my HTMX uh, Go thing. Okay, awesome. I want to go back. I want to go forward. I want to go back. I want to go forward. It's just a plugin for, uh, it's just uses, uh, what's it called? It just simply uses Tmux creates an autocomplete and navigates there. And so now I have all of those still right here. So I can still just go to each one of those places. So I can go back to Harpoon and it is what it is. I can leave, I can quit, I can close this down, I can reopen it back up, I can Tmux uh, attach and I'm back to where I was and there we go. Now I can Harpoon it. It's the exact same idea as Harpoon. It's just trying to make it as quick as possible to where you want to be. And it's just one of those things where, yeah, it took like two hours to make, but I've probably, I've literally saved a kajillion hours in navigation. And I love it. The name is the primogen.